Hey, welcome to Sunday Afternoon Trains and Dumplings. This is our Southern Chicken and Dumpling recipe for model railroaders. I'll explain to you how it works well for us next. Hey, this is Brian with the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western, and today AJ and I are making our famous model railroader chicken and dumplings. And we call them model railroader chicken and dumplings because they take a while to cook and they give you plenty of time to play with trains in the middle because it's not a lot of attention by you. They just take a little while to cook. They're easy to make and they're fantastic. The recipe I'm gonna show you will make about 10 or 12 servings for adults, um, plenty of leftovers. And like I said, I did share this recipe with another model railroader and he told me after he tried the recipe that I needed to do a video on it and let you guys know how to do it as well. He thought it was a good idea. Like I said, they're inexpensive, they're easy, they do take a little while to cook, but they're fantastic. They freeze well. You can freeze half of them and still get five or six servings out of what you didn't freeze. They taste even better coming out of the freezer than they did the first day. All right, so they don't take a lot of materials and a lot of ingredients, the following things you're gonna need. All right, what you're gonna need is a pack of chicken thighs. All right, I use a family size pack of chicken thighs because I'm making a big batch and I'm gonna freeze some. If you're not gonna freeze them, you can cut all this in half. All right, I got a 10 pack of flour tortillas. I have a few extra tortillas in the refrigerator, so 10's gonna be plenty. Um, if I need a couple more, I can dip into the refrigerator, but I don't think I will. I also have a large yellow onion, and you can put, it's been suggested, uh, carrots, celery. I put mushrooms in it before it tastes very good, but AJ and I are making them today, and we're going to keep them simple. Um, ourselves and some other family members are probably going to get some, so we're going to keep them simple. And I've also got a family-sized can of cream of chicken soup. So I've got... A yellow onion, a family sized can of cream of chicken soup, a pack of flour tortillas. See, look, all dumplings are is flour. So we take these flour tortillas, cut them into dumpling shape. They puff up just like a real fresh homemade dumpling. And I promise you, I know what they are because my grandma makes real dumplings. All right, they're not as good as hers, but they're real close. She said so herself, and that ain't no joke. All right. I got salt, I got onion powder, I got garlic powder, and I got butter. All right, now the reason why I got garlic powder is because they didn't have any fresh garlic at the store because of this, uh, I guess, the supply chain issues. And they did have a can of minced garlic, and it was kind of large, and it was only like 13 bucks. Uh -uh. This rest, this whole meal cost around that, I wasn't gonna pay $13, so I am gonna use powdered garlic, and I would never do that normally. But that's going to have to happen today. All right, so what we're going to do now, I got this pot of water boiling. Now, I'm going to do it in a crock pot. You can do this in one pot on the stove and be done with it, okay? I'm going to do it in the crock pot. You can just do it in the crock pot, too, but I don't want it to take that long. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually boil the chicken on the stove, and then I'm going to take the water that's left, the broth, and pour it in the crock pot. I'm gonna put the chicken in the refrigerator to cool, and then we're gonna put the onions, and we're gonna put the soup, and we're gonna mix that with the water and the butter and the seasonings, and then we're gonna let the chicken cool, and we're gonna let that steep for a little while. We're gonna go down and play with trains, and then we'll come back. I'm gonna wash this chicken now, and then it's gonna go into boiling water for about 40 minutes. The chicken just needs to be done or close to done because it is going to cook some more later. But I do want it to get as close to done as I can, and it doesn't hurt to have it all the way done. Now I use chick we use chicken thighs with the skin on, and we do that because we want to make a nice broth. All right. Um, and so we take our cream of chicken soup and mix it with the broth that these thighs make, and the thighs make a very good broth. I don't recommend using your chicken breast. You're gonna think some of you might think, hey, go grab some boneless, skinless chicken breast to make this stuff. It'll be even better. No, 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 no. You need bone-in thighs, skin on. You need to boil them in the water. So I'm gonna say I had uh, probably eight or nine chicken thighs there. They are in the water. They will 
will boil. When they are white throughout, I will pull them, I will cool them in the refrigerator because the reason why I'm cooling them in the refrigerator is this chicken is gonna be pulled like pulled pork. Once it gets cold, cool. Once it's cool and I can touch it, stand to touch it without burning my fingers, it's ready to go. And I'm gonna get in there and the cooler it is, the easier it is to get rid of any skin or fat that's on the chicken and to get it off the bone as well. So the better it's cooked also. So I wanna get rid of everything that's not a wonderful, perfect bite of chicken. And what I take, then I take it and I pull it, just like pulled pork and I drop it in the pot. Once I get all the chicken in the pot, I put the tortillas in. That's at the end, that's the last thing. You cut your onion as follows. And so what you do is you peel the onion. Got a little bit of that left. You peel the onion and it'll pretty much dissolve this way. These can go ahead and go in the crock pot because there's nothing but a little bit of water in there. Anyway, I just put a touch of water in there and I'm gonna put these in there now. If you are curious, the chicken is a frothly bubbly mess. We just got a little bit of water in here, about an inch. Onions can go in because there's no sense in them not. As I said, the uh, more they cook down, the better. good time to use a nice chunk of butter. Mm -hmm. Another friend I was giving this recipe to wanted to know what exactly does the butter do? Why do you use the butter? I said because butter is good. Garlic. Salt. I use a ridiculous amount of pepper, but I'm not going to do it so much today because of AJ and my Nana. I'm hoping my Nana can have a bowl of this. She's not feeling well. All we have now, we have onion, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, butter, a little bit of water, and I'm just gonna cover this. And we go play with trains until the chicken is done in a half hour. See y'all in a half hour. All right, so while the chicken's boiling again, I've got an onion, I've got my family size can of cream of chicken soup in the crock pot. I've got a, about a cup, quarter cup of butter. I've got uh, black pepper, salt, garlic powder, onion powder. All in here, about a half, about an inch of water. All right, in here with all that, it's on high and it'll just sit there and kind of steam for about a half hour. 
And so what will happen is when the chicken's done in about a half hour, 25 minutes, I'll come in here and I'll turn it off and I'll pull the chicken out, put it in a strainer with something under it, and um, I'll put it in the refrigerator to let it cool. And so I will, while after I take it, put it in the refrigerator to let it cool, I'll take this water that's on the stove in the pot, this chicken broth now, and I will mix it with all this stuff, okay? The only other thing that needs to be done at this point, the only other thing that needs to be done at all, would be to cut up the tortillas. Tortillas go in last. Um, the only other thing that's labor intensive will happen is in 25 minutes we'll come in and we'll put this in the refrigerator. We'll leave that sit for about an hour to cool in the refrigerator so I can pull it well. And so what will happen is that will be in there for about an hour cooling while all this stuff is cooking with the hot water in here, with the chicken broth in this other stuff while that's cooling. Okay, and so that chicken has to be pulled and then it goes straight in there. And the only other thing that needs to go in are the tortillas, which can go in right behind the chicken, and they need to be cut up as well. So I could cut the tortillas now or I can cut them later. And there's nothing to it, it's pretty simple. So I'll go ahead and cut it now and just show you what I, how I do it. And what happens is, while these cook with everything else in the crock pot, these little guys soak up all the soup and juice and butter and broth and cream of chicken and chicken juice and they puff up like dumplings. And they puff up like dumplings soaked full of goodness. Fingers in. That, and once these guys peel apart and they get separated, they will, they don't really stick together too bad. And they get in there and they individualize themselves and they puff up. And uh, we got some good stuff on the way, y'all. We'll be back in about 20 minutes when the chicken's ready. Let's roll over here and look at the chicken real quick before we go. It's boiling. All right, here we are. The chicken, chicken boiled about 45 minutes. And I got a strainer and a bowl. And I am just going to... into here. I have a very, very nice, very rich chicken broth now. To add to that, in the crock pot, I have some cream of chicken soup, which is rich. I have onion, I have butter to make it even more rich. guys, we'll go in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. The more patient I can be, the better with that, because the colder it is, the easier it is to get all the yucky stuff off. And so we have a nice, very rich broth. And so I will... Show you what we got going on right now. That's just everything else. Okay, again, that's cream of chicken soup, pepper, salt, garlic powder, onion powder, onions, butter, and a little bit of water. Now, our broth. We add our broth.
that, my ladies and gentlemen, is the soup that the tortillas and the pulled chicken will go in in about one hour. All right, so there's not a whole lot to this, uh, and so I'm not gonna bore you, but what I do wanna show you is that you do not want to use a knife, okay? I'm gonna pull this off camera, but I'm pulling this chicken a long way with the grain. Okay. Different size pieces are fine. Matter of fact, they're good. Larger pieces are good. Okay. Two. Pull it. Stringy. Pull it. Do not cut it. It will actually help to produce a different kind of consistency if you will do this with the soup. I'm gonna pull the rest of this and I'll come back with a pile of pulled to show you when it's all done. But before we go, I do wanna show you the progress here. We've been gone an hour, letting that chicken cool. And there is our onions and soup and broth and seasoning. I'm gonna stir that, pull the rest of the chicken, come back to you when the chicken's are all pulled and then I'll put this in. All right. Hello. We have a family size uh, pack of chicken thighs with all the good stuff separated from the bad stuff. It's pulled pretty good. You get tired about halfway through it and stop pulling it so good, but if you pull real good at the beginning, that's okay. Now all this is going to go into the crock pot. Mm, that smells good. Bryce is saying, hey. Hold on, Gracie, I got you some chicken coming. Alright, so these will puff up, but they do soak up the liquid volume as well. Just seems like uh, I've never blown the top off of the crock pot before. The only way you want this to be thick at this point at all is if you're going to be serving it to a large group. If you're not, if you're gonna have any leftovers at all, you wanna leave it a tiny bit thin 
for your first night's helping, the suit might be a little thin. Man, it thickens up a little bit. And that's the thing, if it starts off thick, it might, I've never done it like that. I try to kind of keep mine a little soupy on the first night, but if it starts off thick, I'm worried that it could turn a little too pasty in the leftover phase, um, particularly the freezing, thawing, and reheat. All right, there we go. And this, I'll leave on high for an hour and then I'll probably kick it to low for a couple and then it'll be good to go. All right, so we've been on high about uh, an hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, I'm gonna kick it back to low now. I'm gonna give you a view of these beautiful dumplings and I'm going to dip a bowl for AJ. AJ's ready for a bowl. So. show you how it is. Yeah. Whoa. Check that out, everybody. Can't you just taste it at home? Yes, you can taste it at home because I just gave you the recipe. This is about a... <clears throat> $15 recipe that will serve about 10, 8, to cook you can but cook just a little more but there we go and we want to thank you for watching dumplings and trains we hope you enjoyed it we hope you'll go out and try the recipe we'll hope you'll leave us a comment below and let us know you were here we'll hope you'll smash that thumbs up button for us um, also if you try the recipe please let me know somehow do a video or leave another comment on the comment or something like that and let us know how it worked out for you we'd like to know if you enjoyed it if you do get a chance to try it this is brian with the iron horse Fruit, and i'm with the denver and rio grand western saying goodbye for aj gracie and myself if you have not already i want to encourage you to subscribe click the bell icon and share this with your other friends and uh, this is a channel about in-scale modeling, so if you're into that, subscribe, click the bell icon, and I hope to see you around. Take care.